Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about solving a linear system. We're going to review a little bit about solving a system of equations in two variables and identifying where two lines cross. And we're going to extend that idea into a third variable where we're looking at what happens if we actually have a linear equation with an x, a y, and a z, and what happens if we have a system of equations in three variables? What do those solutions look like, and how do we go about solving them? So let's go ahead and jump right in. So before we start looking at the new component of this, a new variable and a new equation to create what we are going to call a three by three system, what I want to do is review what we have covered in previous videos and in previous courses in a system of equation in two variables. So on part A, we have two lines and we can actually see in the, gra in the graph of those two lines that they are in fact crossing and we could actually see in the graph that it looks like they're crossing at the ordered pair two comma one. But what I want to do is I want to look at these two equations and mathematically figure out where they intersect. So when we cover this in Algebra 1, we do this by either graphing, substitution, or elimination. And since we're going to be really focusing on using that elimination method for today's lesson, I'm going to use that method here. And what I actually am going to do is I'm going to number each of these equations. So I'm going to call this equation one and I'm going to call this equation two. That way when I'm manipulating them it's almost like we're creating instructions and I recommend that you do this as well especially when we move into today's new content because it's going to enable you to stay organized and it's going to enable whoever is reading your work to follow your thought process throughout the way and that's going to be a big help. So if I want to use elimination to solve this system of equations, what I first need to do is look at these two equations, 2x plus y equals 5, x minus y equals 1, and decide what variable I would like to eliminate, meaning I want to add my two equations together and make one of my variables go away. Well, it looks like if I just add them together right now, my y's are going to eliminate. So I'm going to, instead of manipulating anything, I'm just going to take equation 1 and I'm going to add it to equation 2. And what I'm doing here is I am eliminating my y variable. So right here, this is like the instructions of what I'm about to do in purple in this step. So I'm going to rewrite those two equations, 2x plus y equals 5 and x minus y equals 1. And I'm going to go ahead and add them together. Well, 2x plus x is 3x, y plus negative y is 0, 5 plus 1 is 6. And this actually is an equation that I can solve if I divide both sides by 3. I'm going to get that x equals 2, and I'm going to call that equation number 3. And again, it'll make a lot more sense why I'm numbering these equations when we get to the more complicated examples. So now I have found the x value of my solution. I need to find the y value of my solution. And I can do that by using this new equation, number 3, x equals 2, and plugging that into either equation 1 or equation 2. And you should get the same x value or the same y value regardless of which one you use. I'm going to choose to use equation 1 because there's no negative sign there, so I don't have to worry about messing up my sign on accident. So what I'm going to say now in my new directions is I'm going to say use the one I just found in 1, and my goal here is to find y. So if I use x equals 2 in equation 1, I get 2 times 2, that's where I'm plugging that value in, plus y equals 5, so 4 plus y is 5, y is going to be equal to 1. And then my final answer, of course, is going to be me writing this as an ordered pair, 2 comma 1. And that is the ordered pair that we had identified up here from our graph. So I'm going to encourage you to try out this numbering system on B and C. So number the first equation one, number the second equation two, use the little circles, and then try and explain your steps the way that I have here as you're working through, and then unpause the video and see how you did. So hopefully you had some time to work through both B and C, and I have filled in B for you. So I looked at my two equations and decided to add one and two together so that I could eliminate X. That ended up getting me to Y equals one, 
And then I used the first equation to find my x value, which was negative 2, and I wrote my final answer as an ordered pair. And I can confirm in the graph that those two lines are crossing at the point negative 2, 1. Now, if I look at part C, it's less obvious which variable to eliminate here. So it doesn't really matter. We're going to have to do a little bit more work than we had to do before in order to do this. I'm going to eliminate x. And what I need to do in order for my two x values to add to 0 is I actually need to multiply the first equation by negative 3. So I'm going to say negative 3 times equation 1 plus equation 2. And my goal in doing this is that I'm going to eliminate x. You could also multiply the first equation by negative 2 to eliminate y. I'm just going to eliminate x. So when I do this, my first equation is going to become negative 3x minus 3y equals 0. My second equation is going to stay exactly the same. And then I'm going to add these together, and that's going to give me 0x minus y equals 1. So y is going to equal negative 1. That's my new equation. And then I'm going to use that in equation 1 so that I can find x. So x minus 1 equals 0. So x is going to equal 1. And we always write our final answers as coordinates. So this is going to be the point 1, negative 1. Now, what we're going to be getting into in this lesson, as I had said before, is a 3 by 3 system. So three variables, x, y, and z, and three equations that involve x, y, and z. So if this first part is feeling a little rusty, please go back and check out the, vis the video on systems of equations using the elimination method. If you don't have a solid foundation on what we're doing in A, B, and C, this lesson is going to be incredibly challenging. So check that out if you need to. Otherwise, let's go ahead and move on. All right, before we jump into the how do we do this, let's actually try and get a visual understanding of what's going on. A linear equation in three variables, x, y, and z, is an equation of the form ax plus by plus cz equals d or equals r, where a and b and c are not all zero. Some of them can be zero, but they can't all be zero. A system of linear equations consists of three linear equations and three variables. So three equations in three variables. A solution to such a system, instead of an ordered pair, is an ordered triple x, y, and z, whose coordinates make each equation true. So we're, again, just extending this idea of what we did of system of a system of equations in two variables. And down below this, we have some visuals of what might happen. So if we have two lines, going back to the examples above, two lines can be parallel and never cross. They can cross exactly once at an ordered pair, or they can be the exact same line and cross everywhere. So how do we extend that idea to three variables? Well, it's possible that there's exactly one point at which each of these planes intersect. Since we have this third dimension, we're talking about planes here instead of just lines. So they could intersect, the planes intersect in a single point, and that one point is the only point or only order triple that would work in all three equations. It's also possible that the planes intersect at a line which means that there's an infinite number of solutions, not not all real numbers, to be clear, but there are an infinite number of solutions that would work because every single point on a line, on this particular line where they intersect, would work in all three of the equations. And then it's possible that there are no points that all three planes have in common. So here we can see that there's overlapping in maybe two places, but there's no place where the red and the blue or gray and the green, there's no place that all three of them cross. So this would mean that there is no solution because there aren't any ordered triples that, that are in common in all three equations, or there's no place where all three of those planes cross. So key ideas when we're working through the math on these, make sure that you identify which variable you're going to eliminate. And what I'm going to show you is you're actually going to work through that process twice. Then you're going to eliminate that variable and create two new equations. And you're going to solve those, those two equations using a system to find one variable. 
Then you're gonna work backwards. So just like on those examples, after we found X or Y, we went back a step and we plugged it in to figure out what the other variable is. This process is gonna have three variables, so you're gonna be doing that more than once. My expectations for you, and I would say just so that you are being clear and anyone reading your work can follow, is that you line up your variables, that you number them, that your equations and your steps are clear, that you work in a way that it can be followed, which for the most part is gonna be that you're working down on your paper, and that your final answer, if it exists, is an ordered triple and that you've put a box around it so that I can see. But that work needs to be clear, otherwise I can't follow your process. Remember that when you're working your math out, you're, it's almost like you're writing a math paper for someone to read and follow. So let's look at some examples and work through them together. Okay, so here, is a system of equations in three variables. And you can see this already looks a little bit scarier than what it looked like when there was a two by two. But I want you to break this up in the same process that we used before. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna number all three of those equations. Then we're gonna decide what variable that we want to eliminate. So now you wanna be looking at all three equations because we're gonna have to eliminate the same variable twice. So when I look at this, what I'm noticing is that my y values, it looks like if I used equation one and equation three, I could manipulate that and get rid of y pretty easily. But also if I used equation two and equation three, I could manipulate that and get rid of y pretty easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose to eliminate y. And again, we're gonna have to do this two times. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take equation one and I'm gonna add it to the third equation, but in order for my y's to eliminate, I'm gonna multiply the third equation by two. And I'm doing this so that I can eliminate y. So let's go ahead and do that. Rewrite the first equation, and then underneath it, double the third equation and rewrite that one as well. So here I've rewritten equation one, and I have multiplied equation two by, or sorry, equation three by two, and now I'm gonna add them together, and that's gonna give me 16x plus 11z equals six. Now what I want you to notice right here is that unlike with a vari system of equation in two variables, I did not just figure out what a variable was. I didn't end up with x equals one or something along those lines. I have a new equation. So just like I did on the warm up, I'm gonna number that new equation. I'm gonna call this equation number three. But in order to actually be able to find a variable, I need to do exactly the same thing again. So that's why I said I wanna find two ways to eliminate y. So right next to this, and I'm really gonna keep the color consistent, I'm gonna eliminate y again, but I'm gonna do it using two different equations. So not one and three, but instead I'm gonna use two and three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, if I'm looking at the y values, I want negative three y and, and negative y to be zero. I'm gonna take the second equation and I'm gonna subtract three times the third equation. And again, my goal here is still to eliminate y. Everything in purple is my steps towards eliminating y. So I'm gonna rewrite the second equation I'm gonna multiply negative three by the third equation. So go ahead and do that, just setting up those two equations. So here we go. The first line is equation two. The second line is negative three times equation three. And when I add those together, my x's are gonna become negative 16x. My y's are gonna become zero. My z's, five minus 12, negative seven z. And negative seven plus nine is gonna be two. And I'm gonna go ahead and call that equation four. So now, even though we have x and z, what we have are two equations and two variables. We know how to solve systems like this. We just did this on example a, b, and c at the beginning. So we need to look at equation three and look at equation four and figure out which variable to eliminate. Well, it looks like I have negative 16x and positive 16x, so it looks like I can just add these two equations together, and that will give me or that will eliminate x. So I'm just gonna add equation three to equation four. So I'm gonna add equation three to equation four to eliminate x. So go ahead and rewrite them on top of each other and then eliminate x. 
So if I add these together, I'm going to end up with 4z equals 8, which means that z is going to be equal to 2. Now, I'm going to circle this. It's not my final answer that I'm boxing, but I want to now work backwards. This is my equation number five. Let's use a different color. Let's use red. This is my equation number five. Now I want to work backwards. If I plug z into either equation three or equation four, I can figure out what x is because both equation three and equation four only have x and z. So I'm going to use equation three because there's less negative signs. So I'm going to use equation five in equation three, and this is going to help me find x. So 16x plus 11 times my z value, which is 2, equals 6. So 16x, 11 times 2 is 22. And if I subtract 22 on both sides, I'm going to get negative 16, which means that x is going to be equal to negative 1. So now I have x and z, and all I have left to find is y. So again, working backwards, going back to the original three equations, you can either use equation one, equation two, or equation three to figure out what y is. I'm going to choose to use equation one. Again, just because there's the fewest negative signs, it might be nice to use equation three because it just has y by itself. But go ahead and plug everything you know into equation one. So I'm going to write, I'm going to use one with five, and I guess I should call this six, and six, or I'm gonna use equation one with z equals two and x equals negative one. So four times negative one plus two y plus three times two equals 12, and then simplify, negative four plus two y plus six equals 12. So two y is going to be 10, which means that y is going to be five. And our final answer should be written as an ordered triple alphabetically. So x comma y comma z. So these problems are a lot of work and you want to go slowly and take your time because if you make a mistake just writing something down at the very beginning, it's going to throw off everything throughout the entire problem. So go slowly, double check, make sure you multiplied correctly, all of those things so that you don't end up reworking through the problem many times. Something else that you'll notice is that there's a lot of different approaches that you can take on each problem. We didn't have to eliminate y first, that's just what I felt like was a good choice. You could have also pretty easily eliminated x first, and it wouldn't have been too big of a challenge. So just be thinking through that, make sure that your final answer makes sense. You could check it at even just mentally by plugging it back into the other two equations and making sure it works. But go slow, that's my biggest advice to you. Take your time, make sure your work is clear. And let's go ahead and look through another example. So I'm gonna clear out some space for us to work on number two here. Much better, we got a lot of room now. So step one, number your equations. Two, three. Step two, decide what you want to eliminate. So my first thought when I first glanced at it was this is gonna be pretty simple to eliminate x's. But remember that you have to eliminate everything twice and check out your y's, negative two, positive two, positive two. So it seems like it's actually gonna be really easy to eliminate y three times. That being said, you're more than welcome to pause the video and try and work through it by eliminating x first. I just can see that it, I'm not gonna have to multiply anything at all, which is good. I don't have to worry about making multiplication mistakes. I'm not gonna have to multiply anything at all to eliminate y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add equation 1 and equation 2 to eliminate y, and I'm going to add equation 1 and equation 3 to eliminate y. So go ahead and pause the video and get that set up. Okay, so I've set up my two equations here, 1 plus 2 on the left, 1 plus 3 on the right, and I'm going to go ahead and add them together. 3x plus x is going to give me 4x. My y's are going to become 0. Oh, look, my z's are going to become 0 as well. Negative 11 plus 7 is negative 4. So I actually just got kind of lucky. What I just did gave me the x value, and I didn't have to have another equation. I didn't have to do what I had to do on the last example to do that. Let's see what happens in our 1 plus 3. It looks like my x's are going to add to be 0, and my y's are going to add to be 0. My z's, it looks like z plus... 4z is going to give me 5z. 
and it looks like negative 11 plus negative 9 is going to give me negative 20. So I'm going to get that z is equal to negative 4. Don't get too excited. That doesn't happen too much. But now that I know what x is and I know what z is, I can use any of the equations above to find y. So I'm going to choose to use the second equation again because the, the variable that I'm looking for, it doesn't have any negative connected to it. So I'm going to use equation 2 with what I just found in 4 and 5. And this is going to help me find y. So keeping that work organized so that me or someone else looking over your work can follow what you were doing. So if I use equation 2, I'm going to have 3 times x, x was negative 1, plus 2 times y, minus z, which is negative 4. That's going to equal 7. So 2y, negative 3, and positive 4 is going to become plus 1 equals 7. If I subtract 1 and then divide by 2, I'm going to get that y equals 3. And don't forget your final answer should be written as an ordered triple, negative 1, 3, negative 4, x, y, and z. So that's the process, and you really only get better at doing this when you practice it. Sometimes you're going to get frustrated and you're going to have to start over. You're going to make a little algebra mistake somewhere, but take your time, go slow, make your work clear, and you'll get there eventually. Before we wrap up, though, there are special cases that we talked about when we were looking visually at what could happen. We said it's possible that there's actually no solution and it's possible that there are infinitely many solutions. So I want to work through what that looks like from the equation end since we already looked at what it looks like visually. So we're going to actually do four more examples. Two of them are going to be no solution examples and two of them are going to be infinitely many solution examples so that you see what that looks like. Those ones are a little faster to work through oftentimes. So um, let's go ahead and get through that. Now I want you to pretend that this section doesn't say no solution on the top and that we're approaching this problem the way that we normally would. So the first thing that we've been doing and that we will continue to do is go ahead and number the equations. So this is equation one, equation two, and equation three. And then we're going to go ahead and decide which variable we want to eliminate. So when I'm looking at all three things here, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like I want to eliminate y because I can just multiply 1 by negative 5 and add it to 2 and multiply 4 by negative 5 and add it to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to multiply negative 5 by equation 1 and add it to equation 2. This is going to help me eliminate y. And then my second thing I'm going to do is multiply negative 5 by equation 3 and add it to equation 1, still to eliminate y. So these are the, I'm going to draw a line down here. This is what I'm going to be doing. So if I multiply 5, negative 5x, negative 5y, negative 5z, this is going to equal negative 10. And then I'm keeping equation 2 exactly the same. And then I'm adding them together. This is going to become 0. This is going to become 0. My y's and my z's are also going to become 0. 0, 0. This whole left-hand side of my equation is going to become 0. And the right-hand side is going to become negative 7. So all the way back to Algebra 1, anytime we end up at a place where we have a statement that no longer has any variables, like this here says 0 equals negative 7. We have to ask ourselves the question, is this true or false? Does 0 equal negative 7? And the answer to that question is this is false, which means this system has no real solution. And I'm going to draw the set, the empty set symbol to establish that. I don't need to work through what I had said I was going to do over here on the right because I already know that there's no real solution. So what I want you to do is pause the video and work through number four with the idea that you're probably at some point going to get to this exact same place where you have a statement that's false. And then unpause the video and see how you do. And I'm going to tell you that I'm going to choose to eliminate x when I work through it. So if you want to do what I'm doing, go ahead and try and eliminate x. So when I was eliminating x on number four, I multiplied negative six times equation one and I added it to equation two. And I didn't get no real solution. I have three y minus 18 z equals eight. So now I'm gonna work through my second step over here, negative two times two plus three. 
So if I do that, I'm going to have negative 12x minus 18y plus 24z equals negative 28. And I'm going to have positive 12x plus 18y plus 24z equals negative 11. Now when I add this together, I'm seeing that everything over here, whoops, this should have been a negative 24. I apologize. This is going to give me 0 is equal to negative 39, and that's not true. So I'm going to end up with no real solution. So the first problem that I did that had no real solution, number 3, I found it on my first elimination step. The second problem, I found it on my second one. So it's, again, at any point in time, if you end up with no more variables and two numbers equal to each other that are not actually equal to each other, that means that there's no real solution. So let's look at the opposite of this. What happens if we ended up with 0 equals 0, or in this case, negative 39 equals negative 39? Let's look at some examples like that. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to pause the video and work through number five and see how far you can get before maybe you see something weird happening or you get a little confused about what you need to do. Then unpause the video and see how you've been doing. So I decided to eliminate z first. I added one and two. I added three and four and I got two new equations. So go ahead and check over that. In order to eliminate, I'm going to say x, I'm going to multiply negative 3 by equation 4, and I'm going to add that to equation 5. This is going to eliminate x. So negative 6x plus 6y is going to equal 18, and 6x minus 6y is going to equal negative 18. And all of a sudden, everything that I'm adding together is going to be 0. When all the variables go away, we ask ourselves the question, true or false? And this is true. Zero does equal zero. What this means is that there are infinitely many solutions, or I'm going to abbreviate that as IMS. There are infinitely many solutions that work. Not every single number works, but there's an infinite number of ordered triples that work. Let's look at what those ordered triples will look like. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take equation 4 and I'm going to solve for x. If I solve for x, I'm going to get negative 2y. Sorry, I'm going to solve for y, not x. Negative 2y equals negative 2x minus 6. So y equals, if I divide everything by 2, x plus 3. So if I was going to write my triple, x is going to be x. And y, based on this, is always equal to x plus 3, whatever that x value is. Then I'm going to do the same thing for z. I'm going to come up here. So I'm going to take equation 1, and I'm going to solve for z. I want everything to be in terms of x. So z is going to equal negative x plus y minus 3. And we just said that y we just said that y is equal to x plus 3. Actually, let's do this over here. So I can plug that in for y. So z, whoops, z equals negative x plus x plus 3 minus 3. And that actually looks like it's all going to simplify to be that z is equal to 0. So what this means is z is actually always 0. x you can pick any x value to determine an ordered triple. So, and for example, if x was 1, the point 1, 4, 0 would be a solution to this system. If x was 5, the point 5, 8, 0 would be a solution to this system. So I'm going to encourage you to try and work through number 6 all the way on your own and see if you can actually find this ordered triple set up the same way we did here, and then unpause the video and see how you did. So the most important part in working through this problem is that you can get to the infinitely many solution part and recognize that that is what this answer means. So I added 1 and 3 and 2 and 3 to eliminate y, and then I multiplied my equation 4 by negative 3 and added it to 5 to eliminate z, and I ended up again with 0 equals 0, which is true, which means infinitely many solutions. So I'm going to again write the ordered triple now. I'm going to solve um, equation 4 for z. So that's going to be 4z equals negative 4x plus 24. So z equals negative x plus 6. 
So I have x is x, and I have z is negative x plus 6. And then I can solve any of the equations for y. I'm going to do that with number 3. So first, I'm actually just going to divide everything by 2. So x plus y plus z equals 6. So y equals negative x minus z plus 6. And if I plug this in, I'm going to end up getting that y is equal to 0. So x, 0, and negative x plus 6. That is the pattern or the criteria that needs to be met in order for me to find an ordered triple that is a solution to this system. So key ideas in this section, extending the idea of a system of equation in two variables to a system of equation in three variables, which can either have exactly one solution, meaning the three planes intersect at a point. It can have infinitely many solutions, like we just looked at, where the, th the system intersects at a line. Or it can have no solution where all three do not intersect and have any points in common. When you're working through this, make sure you identify what variable you want to eliminate, that you're clear in your work and numbering those steps, and that your answer is written as an ordered triple. Go ahead and write down any questions you have, and I look forward to supporting you on this. Thanks for listening.